Hello and thank you for joining us for the fifth in this series, an introduction to high dynamic range for onset production. My name is Kevin Salvage. I'm the European Regional Development Manager for LEADER based in London in the UK and if you have any questions concerning this presentation or any others in the series or any LEADER products please don't hesitate to contact me on the numbers currently on the screen. So today we're going to talk about high dynamic range. So what is high dynamic range? High dynamic range or HDR is rapidly establishing itself as one of the most interesting new technologies to emerge in the broadcast industry for a number of years. Unlike previous technology innovations, HDR has evolved from a number of technology innovations. For years, the broadcast industry has been restricted by the limitations of the display device that the content is displayed on. So whilst camera technology has evolved, and the dynamic range of cameras has increased, the display devices have failed to keep pace. In simple terms, high dynamic range is a way of displaying the wider dynamic range inherent in the original captured content. A film camera or modern digital camera is capable of capturing a higher level of brightness, luminance, and perceived deeper blacks than a current video display is capable of showing. But HDR isn't simply about increasing the brightness of an image, it's about increasing the overall dynamic range between black and white by making the darker parts darker and the brighter parts brighter, whilst retaining detail when both are in the same frame. But to understand high dynamic range, you have to have a reference. So what is dynamic range? The dynamic range of the human eye in a single image is around 12 stops. But the human eye has a built-in iris. It also has different sensors for the darker and lighter parts of the image. So the total dynamic range of the human eye exceeds 24 stops. So the standard dynamic range video with a 2.4 gamma curve and a bit depth of 8 bits per sample is around six stops. Professional standard dynamic range video with a bit depth of 10 bits per sample is about 10 stops. But when hybrid log gamma is displayed on a 2000 nit display with a bit depth of 10 bits per sample, it has the dynamic range of 17.6 stops, which means that's wider than the human eye in a single image. And that's why HDR is so important. Because when you then couple this with the human brain that sits behind the eye, now, rather than passively observing an image, we start to actively engage with the picture. We look at it in more detail. We take in more information. And that's why high dynamic range is so important. However, it isn't just about the difference between the darkest and brightest elements in an image. High dynamic range also calls for greater expression and details within colours too. Traditional CRT displays restrict the colour space that the broadcaster used and resulted in the creation of the 709 standard. The new UHD display support a wider colour space than standards REC 2020. But many broadcasters believe a four times higher pixel count won't deliver the wow factor needed for the new broadcast formats. On this graphic here, we're showing the optimum viewing distance by the size of the television and its resolution. Now, in Europe, the average viewing distance is around three meters, which means for an HD production, we really need to be watching it on a 50 to 55 inch display. And surprise, surprise, when you visit your electronic showrooms and high street retailers, majority of the displays fall into a 50 to 55 inch size. For UHD, we're looking at a 75 to 80 inch, which is bigger 
than most European homes can accommodate. So, HDR opens up the potential for more engaging, more beautiful content, as well as future-proofing content. So let's have a look at the dynamic range of natural scenes. So a diffuse object under diffuse light is around four stops. A diffuse object under diffuse light with deeper shadows is around seven stops. Hard light with deeper shadows around nine stops. And then particular lights with deep shadows, we're getting into the range of 14 stops. Now, most of the modern digital film cameras can today exceed 14 stops of dynamic range on their capture. As I mentioned, as well as a built-in iris, the human eye is made up of two sensors, rods and cones. The rods are more sensitive to low light, the cones are more sensitive to the highlights, and in the middle we use a mixture of the rods and cones. So here we have today's television standard, based upon the 709 colour space and 100 nits. In the real world, we can go anywhere from 0.01 nits to in excess of 100,000 nits. And then we have what the human eye can see with its day vision and night vision. Cinema, which because it's in a controlled environment, doesn't need to go to the brightness of 100 nits. And then we have what's now being referred to as the entertainment dynamic range. And this is the challenge that future TVs will be addressing. So HDR comes with a number of formats and I'm going to split these into distribution and acquisition. So on the distribution side, we have four that are based on PQ or the perceptual quantizer developed by Dolby. That's HDR10, Dolby Vision, Philips Stroke Technicolor HDR, and HDR10 Plus. Then we have Hybrid Log Gamma, which was jointly developed by the BBC and NHK. And then on the acquisition side, we have three based on Kodak's Cineon file format. And these are manufacturer specific acquisition formats. So S-Log3 from Sony, ARRI with Log C, and C-Log from Canon. You also have PQ for acquisition and hybrid log gamma. And like all these things, we have standards. So we have PQ, SMPTE 2084, and this comprises no metadata. We then have SMPTE 2086, HDR10, which is static metadata. And then we have the dynamic metadata, and this is SMPTE 2094, and we have dash 10 for Dolby Vision, dash 20 for Philips, dash 30 for Technicolor, which have actually now been combined, and we have dash 40 for HDR10+, Plus, which has been jointly developed by Amazon and Samsung. So thank you once again for joining this short presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you once again.